Hi guys, I wanted to do a real quick video tutorial on the anatomy of the temporal bone. And so I'm going to use this um, Human Anatomy Atlas by Visible Body that we've been using in class. So first I'm going to start with the outside, um, what we can see from the external view. And you're going to have to bear with me because I have to do this via my phone. So we're going to start with, I'll look at your list, we're going to look at the mastoid process. The mastoid process is this portion of the temporal bone right here. And so it sticks out, let me rotate this a little bit, there we go, it sticks kind of outward and downward. Um, don't be confused when you look up underneath, it's not this right here, that's part of the occipital bone. So I want to make sure, I only have a half a skull here, that you're looking on the temporal bone right behind this little spike is this lower portion that's hanging down that's the mastoid process very close nearby is the external auditory meatus and that is what i would like to refer to as our outer ear hole so that's where our ear canal is going to go into the skull right through there external auditory meatus and a meatus is a channel in bone Directly underneath that is the styloid process. That's that little spike. You can see pretty good right there. The styloid process hanging down like a pointed projection. And this portion here that reaches forward towards the zygomatic bone. That portion is called the zygomatic process. Now, notice I'm stopping right there where I see a little suture between the zygomatic bone and the temporal bone. This portion is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. The last part that we can see externally that I'd like to mention is this upper piece um, right here. So, so this area here is very thin and flat. And for that reason, they call it the squamous portion of the temporal bone. Um, so let's see if I can get rid of my parietal bone. There we go. I was able to get rid of the parietal bone so I can spin this skull. And you can see, let me maximize this. There we go. So as I spin, you can see how thin and flat this portion of the temporal bone is. Watch this area. That's why it's called the squamous portion, because we know squamous means scale-like. So very thin and flat. And that takes us to the internal view of the skull. So here's a sagittal view, mid-sagittal. And I actually want to tip this up a little bit so we can see there's our temporal bone. And I'm going to mention this part right here. We've got two internal parts that I want you to know. The let me find my annotation tool here. This opening right there is known as the internal auditory meatus. And so that's kind of an internal um, continuation of the external auditory meatus. And so that's on the internal view of the skull. And that's a part of this portion right here trying to stay on track. It's kind of hard to do with my hand. Um, that's called the petrous portion of the temporal bone, and petrous means rock-like. So if I twist and turn this, you can see it looks like a little mountain range inside there. Um, and inside of that petrous portion is where the internal parts of your hearing and balance apparatus are lying. Um, so uh, there's going to be a nerve that exits kind of like this with all of your hearing and balance information and it's coming in towards the brain from those parts that lie in this region here. Finally, the last part of the temporal bone that I want to mention to you is the, let me go all the way underneath here, the mandibular fossa. And so as I'm twisting and turning, what I want you to notice is how the mandible in the temporal bone make a joint here. And so you can see the top part of the mandible right here, this is the condylar process of the mandible, is going to fit into this shallow 
indent or what's what means ditch fossa and so if I highlight the mandible and I think I want to just fade that no I want to hide it altogether um, we see this little part right here let me get my tool this shallow indentation where the mandible fits into the temporal bone and forms the only movable joint of the skull that's known as the mandibular fossa and so let me show you that from just a little bit different angle from underneath I removed the mandible but I still have there's my temporal bone and there's that mandibular fossa right there so if I unhighlight that you can see how there's a little indentation where the mandible should fit into and there you have it, the external and internal anatomy of the temporal bone.